Hi guys, it's Lewis here from D6 Evolution and today we're reviewing the Orc part of Saga of the Beast. Um, now I have to preempt this by saying I'm not the biggest uh, Orc knowledge base. Um, I know a little bit about it but um, I'm certainly going to miss a lot of the combos and stuff that you guys are going to pick up as I read through these rules. Uh, so do forgive me, um, I withdrew the short straw in the uh, D6 Evolution group because uh, none of us really have a huge amount of knowledge on the, on the Orc Codex um, but I'm hoping I can do my best for you. Um, so I'm going to go through the uh, new PA stuff that's just come out um, and this will be in conjunction with uh, Andy who will be looking at the Space Wolf stuff. Uh, so let's jump straight into it. Guys, if you haven't checked us out, um, we're a competitive YouTube channel. We focus on tactics um, and uh, generally getting you better at the game. And we also do a review of the new books as and when they get uh, ready for pre-order. Uh, so stay tuned and we'll have much more uh, content in the future. Uh, so to jump straight into it, um, I'm going to be looking at the, uh, the Orc section, as I said. So uh, much like we've seen with much of the other PA stuff, uh, it's got a, a few new rules, uh, some updated character units, um, some new stratagems, uh, warlord traits, uh, psychic powers, etc. Um, so, uh, sorry, no new warlord traits, but instead of that, there's custom jobs. Uh, so within this book, you've got um, the stratagems which are going to follow, specialist mobs, custom jobs, and clan psychic powers. Uh, so you guys have probably seen some of the content, particularly if you're an orc aficionado, um, and so you, no doubt you've seen the new rules for Gazgol Fracker, and I'm super excited for him because those are some good rules. That's what we need um, on some of our larger character units. I was hoping they would find some way to make him unique, and they've certainly done that. Um, the ability for him to only take a maximum of four wounds in each phase hugely improves his survivability um, and really makes uh, some interesting play both for your opponent and for the player uh, controlling him um, about how they're going about their game. So I really like that from Games Workshop. I think that's a fantastic rule. I'd like to see that or similar uh, applied to some of the other stuff. Um, you know, I know for me, I'm a massive Mortarion fan, uh, but obviously you drop him on the board and he gets shot off and then you don't get to use him. So uh, I think that's a fantastic rule they've included for them. Other than that, he's kind of what you expect him to be. Um, and obviously I'm sure many of you guys have seen the rules uh, previews already. Um, just a note from here, I believe he is 285 points and that includes all of his war gear. Uh, so I think that's pointed about right. Might, might be a little bit expensive, maybe 240, 250, um, but I'm sure we're going to see some play out of him and uh, it's certainly going to be fun when you do. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to think about how how you build your list to, to allow you to do damage in multiple phases. Otherwise, you are looking at, you know, if you were just an entirely shooty army like Tau, for example, uh, you know, it's going to take you three or four turns to take this guy down. Uh, so that's that's pretty exciting. Um, but obviously, if you're someone, I don't know, like Thousand Sons with a bit of shooting, a bit of psychic, a bit of assault, uh, maybe you've got a way to do it a bit more easily. Uh, so really interesting inclusion. Uh, certainly going to shake up a little bit of the, the play from people. Um, and all around, he's, he's a good character. Um, the other thing I would say about him is obviously you're going to take him. If you're going to take him, you're going to take Makari. Um, it's 65 points, Makari. That's that's part of this book now. Um, so that combo, you know, puts you into the 350 kind of range, which is quite a lot of it, uh, points for that kind of combo. But I must admit, having a two plus invulnerable save that you have no restrictions on re-rolling. I can see that ruining a lot of people's days. I'm sure lots of us have played Drakari, uh, trying to shoot at an Archon, and uh, you know, he's just making those two ups one after a time, you know, 10, 12, 13 in a row. Well, imagine if he gets a free re-roll, well, a CP re-roll on one of those. Uh, you know, that can be incredibly frustrating. So, yeah, I, I think um, Makari's going to find his way into a lot of lists, um, even if he doesn't necessarily go along with <laughs> with the whole Gazgold fracker, and you just take him on his own because... Uh, He's, a, he's going to be a little little poop bag. <laughs> it's going to frustrate a lot of players. Uh, so that's fantastic. The other interesting thing here, and again, I'm, I'm totally going to show my inexperience if uh, you know if, if this is wrong uh, with orcs, but um, the big mech has found his way into this book. Um, but that is the big muck with the custom force field. I think that was an index inclusion that would have got legends because um, it wasn't in the codex. Uh, so it looks like they brought him back. I don't entirely know that, so please feel free, guys, to to make a comment on that. But but yeah, big mech, custom force field. It's just come straight with a, a slugger and a chopper, chopper and some sick bombs. Uh, you can buy a grot oiler from him, uh, for him. Sorry, that's 55 points for him, and obviously he gives the the five plus and vulnerable save. So. Um, yeah, pretty interesting there, um, and obviously he's a mechanic as well. Um, so yeah, nice to see him come back from Legends, I guess. I think that's perhaps the first time we've seen that. Um, but yeah, 
So those are the three new data slates. Um, and now we move on to what I'm sure everyone is most excited about, and that is the ORC stratagems. I'm going to pause for a minute here. Uh, I've, as I've said, I've precursed this by saying I'm not the huge uh, ORC aficionado, so I'm not sure if I'm, uh, I'm just missing things here, but I don't get the greatest feeling about this book. Um, I kind of feel like it's bit on par with perhaps like the GSC book. Uh, it's nice to have some new rules. Yeah, there's one or two interesting things in there. I haven't seen anything that gets me super excited. Again, you know, these guys, you guys, when you get the books and you start playing it through, I'm sure you're going to find some interesting stuff. Um, but just on a first read through, I, I haven't been massively excited by this. Um, so apologies, all guys. I don't think you got it too bad. <laughs> I think the main codex is pretty awesome as it stands. Uh, and I don't think it needed a huge amount of help. Um, and yeah, okay, there's a few new stratagems in here, but I don't think you're going to be looking to this book for, for wonders. So that's my hot take on it straight off the, off the press. Uh, as I've said, I've only had this book for <laughs> a few hours, so I'm having a quick read through it and seeing what I see. Uh, but let's go straight into orc stratagems. There are a few of interesting things. There's definitely some fun stuff in this book, no doubt. And if you're a bit more of a fluffy player, you're going to have a great deal of fun with this book but competitively wise um, I wasn't seeing too much that kind of got me going. Um, the first thing I would mention and it's the first strategy in this book is called Custom Job custom job is a bit like the new Tau uh, weaponry uh, or advanced targeting systems or whatever they are um, you, you basically you pay a CP and that upgrades one of your units who has a particular weapon type or, or something that um, uh, and it makes it slightly better if you take a big mech workshop you get that for free um, I don't see you paying however many points it is I think it's like 100 points or whatever for the big mech wedge workshop uh, which I've, again I think is also a fortification to take a attachment slot just to get a free thing that you can pay a cp to get anyway and the custom jobs aren't that exciting um but nonetheless uh you know you have the ability to do so if you're going to take a custom job you're probably paying one cp there's maybe two that i think are good um and uh and so anyway there's a strategy in there to get it um, I'm not going to go through every single one. Um, I'll, I'll brush through these fairly quickly, just look at the more interesting ones. And if I'm talking about these and you're thinking they're interesting, um, great. If you think they're not interesting, then you're probably not interested in the other ones, which are even less interesting. Uh, so we're starting off with the, the cleverest boss. Interesting, I guess. Uh, select one big me mech model from your army, add one to the model's wounds and attack characteristics, and change its weapon skill to 2+. plus. Uh, you can only use this stratagem once per battle, and only if your army does not include a mech bus a buzz grob. Um, I thought that's a ballistic skill 2+, plus at first, and I was thinking, oh my god, shack attack guns are going to be insane now. Uh, but no, it's weapon skill, which is still okay, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, no, you're not, it's only for big mechs. Um, nothing really exciting there again you know legends units are still out so you're not looking at your big mechs or more bikes and things like that i don't believe uh, again i'm not entirely knowledgeable about orcs but i don't think there's huge use for that um, next one uh, probably one of the better stratagems uh, so it's nice that it's kind of in early and that is grot bumper um, and this is use your strategy use this stratagem in your opponent's shooting phase when attack made with a ranged weapon successfully wounds a, bo a boom daka snaz wagon model from your army that saving throw is automatically passed uh, each unit can only benefit from the stratagem once per battle uh, so very much similar to what we're seeing with the word bearers uh, basically an auto pass uh, wording slightly different it doesn't count as a six it's just automatically passed uh, which i guess is interesting i'm sure there's some interactions there which uh, which will come into play uh just limited by the fact that it only works on boondock and snags wagons uh, that should just say in my mind that should be one cp any orc vehicle um but if you are a massive fan of those that that is a very good stratagem and if you're not using them in your army because they're rubbish <laughs> then <laughs> you're never going to use it um Next one then is um, temper Temperamental Shock Drive again. If you like your shock drum dragsters, and I'm going to struggle with the, uh, <laughs> with the words on these, uh, then uh, yeah, basically when you advance, uh, sorry, you pay one CP uh, in your shooting phase after you're shooting with a shock jump dragster, uh, the unit automatically advances and the result is a four plus, uh, which I believe means that you do the te teleporter uh, and read deep strike uh so yeah great you'll automatically pass that for a cp you could just roll a four plus and maybe use a cp to re-roll it but hey it's uh it's there um so the biggest boss uh this is a generally a good one to be fair because you are almost certainly taking a war boss you're probably going to give him um head whoppers kill chopper or whatever um and so you want him a bit more survivable 
one CP, give him an extra wound, give him an extra attack, and give him a four plus invulnerable save. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Can't use it if you've got Gasgol's Thracker, uh, fair enough. Um, but if you're not taking him, I mean, every single Orc player is going to take that, I'm sure. Uh, a bit like the Chapter Master for Space Marines, it's a bit of an auto include. So one of the one of the better strategies. Next one, uh, probably the best stratagem, I think, in the book, necessarily. Um, people can argue with that. Uh, this is for looters and burner boys. I think this was um, previewed already, and I think GW are kind of wising up to the idea of previewing the better stratagems to get people excited by the books rather than rubbish ones that no one cares about. Um, and that is looters and burner boys from your army uh, cont that contain nine or less models for one CP or two CP for ten or more models, which probably going to be 2cp um, whilst that unit contains one or more spanners you can roll one additional uh, dice and discard one when determining the number of shots uh, the death guns equipped with a fire with uh, you can use it once per battle so absolutely fantastic um, you really are looking for those three shots um, two's okay one is absolutely rubbish as many people know who run looters uh, especially when you try and double shoot them etc etc uh, so yeah the fact that you can you know roll two dice to set the highest is great and it does uh, combo with some other stuff later in the book which i'll come into in a minute uh, so yeah just all round very good uh, I'm going to skip the next one because it just affects uh, the custom boo blaster and it's rubbish anyway. Um, the next one then is flying Ed, but um, I must admit, across my entire read of the book, the only thing that I take away from this is burner bombers look pretty good these days. Uh, I mean, they're awesome models. Uh, the orc flies are great. Uh, the blitzer bomber is actually been pretty good anyway, uh, with all the shots that it gets, and I think this brings the burner burner bomber certainly back into play. Uh, and that is uh, one CP flying Edbutt. Use a stratagem at the end of your movement phase. Uh, select one orc unit from your unit that uh, from your army that has the fire battlefield roll. That model is reduced to zero wounds and automatically crashes and burns. Do not roll, <laughs> which is brilliant. I just love the idea. And actually, there's loads of stratagems and stuff in this book that kind of really give you the orky feel. So narratively, they knock it on the head, certainly. Um, but uh, but yeah, the, the idea that you just flying headbutt and just charge your uh, your flyer full of burning petroleum into the enemy is fantastic. Automatically kills your model interesting um i certainly know in sort of itc format where you're playing for kill points i don't know if you'd deliberately do that um but there's always a there's always a case where it's going to work out and uh you know burning bomber the reason i'm mentioning that is when it crashes and burns it automatically does three mortal wounds to everyone within six i think it is um which if you can place the model right which obviously you can because you know that you're going to blow it up you could do some serious damage um you know you could you you, you can pop a character with that you know there's loads of, there's loads of stuff that you could do with that if you need to get that extra kill if you need to get that um that uh, objective point that's what it's there for so really really like that and there's a few other things in in this book that all sort of combo with the burner bombers so yeah I, you know that's probably one of the more interesting things but again something that they previewed uh so yeah um so next one then is full speed lads uh use this as a strategy in your charge phase after charging with an orc biker uh or death killer or war trike uh until the end of the turn add one to the strength characteristic so again interesting kind of nice i mean it's a weaker version of veterans of long war but hey it does the job um okay squig bombs splits the bombers get uh plus one to hit uh for the also oh, plus one to the roll for the uh boom bomber um so that's for the blitzer bomber so that's interesting so instead of going off on a four plus your bombs are going off on a three plus so that makes it slightly better uh special shells i like this one um i'm a massive fan of flash gets i think they're awesome and uh, i think there's some strong uh, free boosters lists out there uh, that you utilize flash gets and this just helps a little bit more so um it's just the icing on the cake really it's 2 CP, so it's a bit of an investment. Um, use this in the shooting phase when a flash kits uh, unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. Until the end of the phase, increase the range by 12, um, which is interesting. They are 24 inch range normally, so that makes a 36 inch range on those uh, on those uh, flash kits. So those are interesting uh, to say the least. Um, and then we kind of just get into a bit of 
nothing really. Um, we've got patch up so you can double the wounds remaining uh, on Morkonauts or Gorkonauts or Stompers for one CP. Um, that's always useful. Everyone uh, who plays Knights is, is, is used to using that kind of stratagem. Um, I think it's movement, weapon skill and attacks on the damage table, uh, which actually the movement particularly, because I think it goes down to something like four movement. Uh, so <laughs> it's nice to be able to get back to your four movement and certainly weapon skill and attacks again for something like a Morkonaut that's going to be in combat is it's going to be quite useful um so yeah it's great uh stomper i don't know it's like 800 points or whatever so i can't see anyone playing it but it's still there um right next one i would love this to work really well i don't know the codex well enough to know if there's some amazing combos with this um i'm sure it's good but this is one of those ones and just to take a moment here uh, we've talked a lot about when a new codex comes out what you can do um, how you read it how you get into it um, one thing i'm always looking for in a codex is movement shenanigans anything that gives you movement outside of the normal movement that you have is absolutely amazing um you know people say oh you know it's minus one to hit minus two to hit minus three to hit they look at anything with minus to hit because it kind of makes sense to them that's that's a lot of value there because they're just looking at the dice and how much models will pick up when they roll them um but movement is more important in the game than dice rolls uh, it's more important in the game than than um uh, than damage than weapons and then killing your enemy so any time that you can get movement outside of your standard movement phase is fantastic uh, so without further ado it's two cp so again it's investment but use this stratagem in your charge phase when an orc unit from your army has finished a charge move and dealt one or more mortal wounds to an enemy unit if that unit is no longer within one inch of an enemy unit it can be immediately chosen to fight to charge with again uh, to charge with again that's super interesting i don't think we've seen that outside of yanari um in any codex and that adds so much value if you think if there was um one more so say you shot a unit of five cabalite warriors or something because they've got the the bog standard um detachment for the um for the uh, as for, for the um agents of vec stratagem so you've got five uh Jakari on a little point, five cabalite warriors. You, you shoot three or four of them off of no, nothing. You charge that maybe at sort of seven or five, six, seven, eight inch range um with a unit that does mortal wounds um, i think i think Gaskill does mortal wounds i think there's some other models that do it as well you kill that unit and all of a sudden you get another free charge so you roll those 2d6 again you get another i don't know like say eight or nine inches all of a sudden you move 15 inches in the charge phase out of nowhere and um also what's really important in that is that especially for things that are coming out of deep strike that lets you charge the first unit which you can only declare things that within 12 you hit that first unit hopefully you kill it um that's really the idea because then you're not within one inch or they your opponents are silly and they pull models away so they're not in combat um and then you get to charge again and that means you can declare stuff again that was within 12 inches of where you are now uh i hope i'm making my point here movement is huge and the ability to double charge is absolutely fantastic so yes it's niche i don't know the codex so i'd love to know if there's serious play there um but just be it's one of those things that you're just going to have in the in the back pocket and all of a sudden your opponent's going to be like what <laughs> as you go charge 12 inches that way charge 12 inches that way and all of a sudden pull out some amazing move and end up on a point or whatever it is so uh, this is the kind of thing that's that really top tier players will always have that card up their sleeve and you know it won't happen every game for sure one in 10 one in 20 one in 50 games it comes out all of a sudden you know it's a huge momentum swing in the game so uh, I, I love that i love that as long as there's lots of places where you can use it <laughs> i don't know how much stuff does mortal wounds um okay wild fire fire um so this is uh, another combo for the for the burner bomb bomber uh sort of list build uh, and that is use a strategy in your movement phase after selecting an enemy unit for the burner bombers ability of uh of burner bombers um select one enemy unit within six inches of the unit is selected roll 1d6 for each model uh up to maximum 10 on a five plus you do a mortal wound so in essence you're just getting to do it twice um to a second unit within six inches uh, so if you get like a tau castle and you run your burn burner bomber past do more wounds to say the first drone unit then you pop a cp do again the same mortal wounds the second burning unit and then you do all your firepower and then you pay your cp and then you blow that thing up <laughs> and then you bring your second burn with bomber in <laughs> on the next turn you do exactly the same thing and then you blow that one up and then obviously it's an air wing so you bring the third one in that's three turns of significant amount of mortal wounds uh yeah okay you know it's a, again it's a cp investment across the board it's probably not going to work out like that but 
I like it. I like it. Uh, it's, it, it, it piques my interest. Um, and as I said, they are awesome models as well. So it, it makes you feel good. Um, so that's the burn and bomb a lot. Um, I would just note that that says specifically it does not uh, be affected by the arsonist subculture, which is uh, one of the sort of custom cultures that we'll come on to in a bit. Um, and uh, yeah, it just gives you plus one on the, on the arsonist subculture, which you don't get on that second round of sh shots or second round of bombs um okay the next unit is a uh, dreaded death machine um so similar to the sort of a thing that the empress children get uh you choose a death dreads unit um after when they're chosen to fight every time you make an additional attack against the same target um sorry every time a model is destroyed against a target you get to make an additional target uh, attack against that same target uh so yeah it's a nice interesting a uh, few extra attacks there. I've used it in Empress Jordan a few times, especially when you're running into hordes. And it's nice to get those extra attacks out. And then very lastly, uh, which is obviously not saying much about the stratagems, hit them harder. Uh, so this is a uh, user stratagem in the fight phase when a mega knobs uh, unit from your army is chosen to fight with. Until the end of that phase, add one to the damage characteristics of all melee weapons. Uh, so that is actually pretty nice, uh, to be fair. And it's one CP um, and mega nogs are really cool. So yeah, so it's a good, good extra stratagem to have. Okay, so uh, we move on from stratagems now and we're into specialist mobs. Uh, this is literally just your custom craft worlds, uh, custom chapters, whatever you want to call them. Um, nice and interesting bit of fluff here. I like the way that they sort of sort themselves out. They say the orcs, uh, I'll read it to you. Uh, so some, some orcs like to form specialist mobs, uh, green skims uh, who share an enthusiasm for a less common obsession and group together with other like-minded orcs with a propensity for a certain subculture. Uh, so in essence, what happens like with the others is uh, instead of being uh, freebooters or bad moons, uh, you are whatever one of these new custom ones is. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, they're really good. Um, so we'll go through them. I mentioned arsonist earlier, um, and yeah, so arsonist is when you can reroll any and all of the dice when determining the number of shots for burners, scorchers, burner bottles, burner exhausters, killer jets, scorcher missiles equipped with in this subculture. When resolving an attack made with a melee profile of a burner equipped on a weapon of with this subculture, you can reroll the wound roll, which is really strong. Obviously, it's only melee, um, but yeah, that's really good. Rerolling wound rolls is a, is a huge thing. Uh, everyone was on rerolling hit rolls when they first came out, and we were kind of limited to just rerolling hit rolls of one. Um, and then we got a few interesting things like Gilliman that you reroll all hit rolls. That seems so long ago now when we think about, you know, a chapter master for every single Space Marine just letting you reroll hit rolls, and it's so prevalent now. Um, well, that's only one section of the set of dice rolls that you have to go through uh, to cause a wound. The next section is is wound rolls. So re-rolling the wound rolls is not quite as good as re-rolling the hit rolls, but it's pretty good. Um, and if you can re-roll the hit rolls and wound rolls, then you've just you're kind of blown the numbers way out of proportion. So, uh, so yeah, really good that you can do that in melee. That's a very good one. Um, and then even better, when resolving the burner bombs ability for a unit with this subculture, add one to each roll. So those blitzer bombers are, uh, sorry, those burner bombers are coming up big when they're, they're, they're more wounds are going off on a four plus. Uh, so yeah, that's a, that's a, a nice one, certainly for your, your uh, burner bomber air wing, which is my favorite list of, of reading this book. Uh, okay, uh, Hunters, Sneaky Devils. Uh, so this is pretty good, actually. Uh, infantry models, excluding Gretchen, uh, get a 5 plus invulnerable save when they're on a terrain feature. And also when they're on a terrain feature, they get plus 1 uh, AP to their weapons. Uh, so I, I like that a lot. Not really necessary for the 5 plus invulnerable save. Okay, but, you know, it's kind of situational. But I'm thinking a, a unit of um, looters, as we were looking at earlier. You know, they're, they're, they're amazing profile. Strength 7, AP 1, D3 attacks, uh, 2 damage, I think it is. Um, all of a sudden, you put them on, you put them as hunters, and all of a sudden, they're, uh, they're AP 2. So that's strength 7, AP 2 attacks, uh, 2 damage, and then you're using that stratagem to roll 2 dice and select the higher, so you're more likely to get 2 or, or even 3 attacks. And uh, all of a sudden, those looters kind of like blow up in, in their capabilities. Now, the problem with this is people have experienced lots on uh, in in other in other books with with psychic awakening. Is you are losing the ability to be one of the better legions, custom 
uh, Legion Crawfolds or uh, whatever. Um, and I don't know necessarily if one extra AP is better than being able to shoot twice for being bad wounds. Uh, so again, you've got to make that decision when you're rolling for this. And I don't see the decision going that way. I don't think you're going to prioritize an extra AP over being able to shoot twice for that. So that's just the way I see it. And I think that's the problem with a lot of this uh, subculture stuff. Um, right, boom boys, blow it up, uh, improve the strength uh, and armor penetration of rocket and stick bombs and tank busters and stuff. Uh, yeah, it's good, good, you know, having extra strength, having extra AP on stick bombs and stuff is pretty good, and rocket launchers as well is good. Um, but again, are you going to take a whole detachment for it? Uh, fly boys, crucial for velocity. Uh, fly models only when resolving a ranged weapon uh, with a subculture and the unit is more than one inches away it's treated as having the benefit uh, of cover to its saving throw so you get cover on your fly models um, and if a unit tries to charge it's minus one to their charge roll uh, to their hit roll sorry um, okay now we're on to the second uh, list build that kind of formulated in my mind reading through this um, it's a build that's always already done amazingly well and people just don't play it because who wants to buy 300 plus correction but um, apparently games workshop really do uh, after their um, reveals today and that is uh, grot mobs cheeky zoggers so your correction your 330 correction that you're running with in this list uh, they get a six plus vulnerable save Fantastic. Uh, and also when they are resolving attack against the vehicle, they get to reroll the hit rolls of one. So, I mean, if you didn't have a reason to buy 330 Gretchen, now you do, uh, because it's probably one of the strongest lists out there at the moment. There's not a lot that can take what is needed to deal with Space Marines and apply that to 330 plus uh, Gretchen. So um, if you're going to play the Roxas of Aper game, that's the certainly probably the better of the three options there. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, next one then is Tin Heads, uh, which you can imagine, as you would guess, is Killer Cans, Giraffe Deads, Mega Armor, Morganauts, Scorconauts, and Stompers only. Uh, and basically, when you're resolving uh, attack with a melee weapon, add one to the hit roll. So, yeah, it's kind of nice. Again, really, are you taking a whole mob for that, a uh, whole subculture for that? Um, so, Feral Orcs, Wild, wild Boys, uh, War Bosses, Weird Boys, Knobs and Boys, uh, which is interesting that it's boys. Um, that's that's actually really good, to be fair. A um, uh, model with this unit can pile in up to six inches, and when making an advanced unit for this subculture, roll two dice and discard the lowest of the two results. So, I mean, a lot of the, the boys lists that we're seeing, in all fairness, you know, they're, they're, they're running for the for the teleporter and to jump and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then they try and find something like um, Storm Boys or Bikers or something that's going to get across the board quickly. Uh, I don't know if this is enough to give the rest of the units in that uh the need to get across quickly uh it's nice that you can advance and charge and i know with them and rolling two dice is pretty good and then being able to pile in six inches so this might be one of the few subcultures that would actually challenge some of the main uh, clans uh, for for position as the main battalion or one of the main battalions of the army uh it's nice to have that extra speed but again you are giving up a lot for it and especially the stratagems and all the stuff that you get with when you go from one of the main pure clans so it is it is a contender and i think a lot of people are an R over it but i don't see it necessarily topping some of the, the big boys that are out there at the moment um okay and then there's one that's absolutely rubbish so you roll a dice and you get nothing that you'd ever want so yeah forget about that um right okay so we are now on to custom jobs uh so i got super excited by this because the towel ones are insane some of those weapons in the towel book are absolutely amazing and then you read this and you're like okay wh 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 where's the good stuff i actually thought i was gonna flick the page and there'd be another page of good custom jobs but there's not <laughs> um okay i yeah although you think that you do start with probably one of the better ones so squig hide tires uh speed freaks uh so that's obviously um uh, a faction or a keyword that you get on some of the other models um, and it's excluding name characters and most frustratingly units that can fly so no um, storm boys getting squig hide tires surprisingly um, but it gives two inches to the units move characteristic um, which is good um, 
yeah, it's on battle wagons, gun wagons, uh, bone breakers, and trucks only. Um, but uh, yeah, it's nice to have an extra two inch movement. No one's going to uh, complain about that. Um, so yeah, and you you can pay a CP and get that. I I would probably pay a CP and get it if I was taking any of those units. Um, I'm going to skip through the next one because it's not particularly brilliant. Um, and I'm going to skip through quite a few. So there's one interesting one here. I do like this. It's called Corkscrew. Uh, I think this is brilliant. This is the Mega Traps, Mega Track Scrap Jet. I am going to say all these words. Uh, and it's uh, the first time this unit finishes a consolidation move in each fight phase. It can immediately fight again, which I mean is pretty good because the Mega Track Scrap, scrap Jet is a good, uh, relatively good unit for that. Um, and I just love the idea. It's called a corkscrew, so it's just kind of spinning through fights one, fights onto the next. So nice, interesting power there. Um, Oh, I really don't think there's much worth discussing in this. Let me just look at my notes quickly. Um, yeah, Orchimatic Pistons is a uh, is an interesting one. Uh, that is Killicans, Death Dreads, Morkonot, and Gorkonot's units only. Add three to the move characteristic, and you can reroll advance for that unit. That's pretty interesting. I think you can get units of six possibly on the killer cans um so having a nice big unit that all of a sudden gets plus three move um you know so that can be quite useful um i just there isn't there isn't much else going on um sparkly bits is kind of interesting for the killer cans but you can't give them automatic pistons and sparkly bits uh, to the same unit so you, you can't kind of double down on the power of one unit but that allows you to improve the ballistic skill uh, characteristics by one uh, so a five plus becomes a four plus do remember guys i uh, just have to just double check this daka daka is unmodified six rolls uh, so getting plus one doesn't doesn't affect that uh, which is a shame because that would make that super strong um yeah um slug governs perhaps a little bit interesting gorkonauts are <laughs> well they aren't going to come back into the top of the meta off the back of this but hey they're there anyway um i do like this just because it's 24 shots uh so basically the slug govern uh replaces the model's death storm mega shooter uh and ups the shots to 24 strength 6 ap minus 1 1 damage shots in addition when uh, resolving an attack with this weapon if the target is within 12 uh, and the bearer was chosen uh, when the bearer was chosen to shoot with add one to the hit roll so hey that's pretty nice um you know again i'd pair cp for that if i was running gorkonauts um but i don't see a competitive list running gorkonauts uh not just <laughs> if that's the only thing they've got going for them it's you're not going to start taking them um and then there's a, a fantastic absolutely phenomenal uh <laughs> custom job for your stomper if you're going to run a, an 800 point model which is uh the model super gatler has a damage characteristic of two which is great uh, in addition, when rolling for the Psycho Daka Blaster ability, you can roll reroll the D6 once per phase, uh, so you can get those extra shots going. So yeah, uh, again, as I said, not really much to speak of there. I'm sure when you get the book, you have a quick flick through, um, but I don't think there's anything else there that's going to get you super super excited. And then lastly, we're on to the clan psychic powers. Uh, so these are specific to the clans that have come out previously. So your goths, death skulls, bad moons, snake knights, snake bites, etc. Um, and again, nothing to write home about, um, uh, but I'll go through them because there's only a few. Uh, so first of all, we've got the goths one. Uh, so this is bull charge. Uh, this could be interesting i guess uh this is it has a warp charge value of six so <laughs> you're definitely casting that with your weird boy um if manifested select one friendly goth unit within 18 inches of the psyker until the end of the turn uh, charge distances of less than seven when roll for that unit after modifiers count as seven i mean i love the language there i think that's <laughs> complicated way of saying it i had to read it a few times to kind of understand it and we haven't seen i don't think we see a precedence of language like that uh but yeah basically if you roll under a seven it counts as a seven so not to say that you are going to make charge rolls guaranteed because they're charge rolls of nine or eight uh, with the plus one um but uh it means that when you're running those guys across the board and then you're trying to make that seven inch charge you you know for a fact you're guaranteed to make a seven inch charge um you have to cast the psychic power for it. You have to take the psychic power for it. <laughs> you have to take a weird boy with a spare psychic power just to cast it. Don't see it really happening. 
Or when you think of something like Emperor's Children, where you just pay a CP and one dice counts as a six, that's amazing. Uh, I guess they couldn't really do that because that would make the Deep Strike stuff too powerful. So this is the closest they can get. Uh, and unfortunately, it's just, I think it's a bit wider the mark. But hey, it's there. If it was a stratagem, it would be very good. Um, so Death Skulls then. Mechanical, um, sorry, Manacle, Maniacal, uh, Seizure. So it's warp charge of 7, select one enemy unit within 18 uh, until the next psychic phase when resolving an attack made by that unit, subtract one from the hit roll, so that's pretty good, and resolving an attack made by a friendly death scold model against that unit, improve the AP by 1. Uh, so yeah, pretty good. Uh, I guess those looters are going to have fun with that, um, with their AP1. Uh, it's also really good for just your, your boys. I mean, Death Skulls are going to run a lot of boys, I'd imagine. Uh, so getting them in combat and them all being AP-1 against that unit, uh, yeah, look, it's, it's okay. Um, and minus one to hit, I can see you. If you had a, a spare psychic power going, uh, it's not a bad grab if you're running Death Skulls, which is, I've seen a, a lot of Death Skulls. That seems to be one of the main sort of battalions you're going to be taking so it yeah, can could have some value bad moons one of my favorites i think between bad moons and free booters probably lean a little bit more towards free booters but that's only because bad moons are the better stratagems and a bit more competitive um so this is uh warp charge value of six if manifested select one friendly bad moons unit within 18 until the start of the next psychic phase when resolving attack made by that uh, sorry, made against that unit, add one to the saving throw, and invulnerable saving throws are not affected. Um, yeah, okay, it's, it's all right. Um, I was kind of thinking maybe some bad moon mega knobs that got a one up save might be all right, but again, I'm, I'm not the orc aficionado, so I wouldn't know how to make use of that the best. Um, I just don't think there's a lot of bad moon stuff that is centered around the kind of saves it gets, and orcs tend to not be anyway. Um, all right. Now we're on to Snake Bites, Constriction. Uh, this is a warp charge of 6. If manifested, select one enemy unit within 12 until the start of your next phase. Half the attack characteristics of models in that unit. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. If you were playing a close combat army, uh, if you're playing another Orcs player, <laughs> you would uh, you would certainly look to take that. I know I play a lot of Slanesh, um, and I love the idea of just reducing the attacks. There's a, a strategy and there's a Warlord trait that reduces attacks by one. Um, but that halves the attacks characteristics. That is really powerful. And actually, imagine if you did that on something like a Knight um, with its, uh, you know, roll three dice for every attack it gets. So you're, they're looking at 12 attacks, and then you're like, well, actually, your attacks are four, and I'm reducing that to two. So now you've only got six attacks rather than 12 attacks. That's huge humongous uh for a warp challenge of six so yeah it's um it, it's got some play in it that i can see it uh but again it's a toolbox thing it's not something you're gonna be building a list around um we're getting close to the end here guys so uh we're on evil suns now visions in the smoke don't really see a huge thing of this to be honest um so if manifested selects an evil sun vehicle within 12 of the psyker and you can only select a unit of wounds characteristics of more of eight, than 18 if the result is more than 9. So you're not getting a stompers <laughs> included in that unless you're all 9+. plus. Um, until the start of your next psychic phase, when resolving an attack made by a model in that unit, you can re-roll the hit roll. Uh, so look, what, uh, it's only one of the Evil Sun's vehicles. That's why I was turned off about it. Because if it was on, you know, again, your looters or your freebooters or something like that, um, six for a warp charge six to reroll hit rolls is phenomenal. And that's what we see in a lot of the other books. And the general power creep of eighth as we approach what's probably the the the, uh, the end of eighth edition. I would fully expect that just to say, you know. Not well, not to be limited to vehicles, uh, because that's kind of what you see with all the Space Marine stuff and, and some of the other books that have come out. So, the fact that it's limited to vehicles is like, okay, we're well, back to looking at, I guess, your Vorkonauts and uh, Blitzer Bomber, maybe, and re the hit rolls. I don't, I don't know, not, not going on. Um, Blood Axes, clever talk. Uh, so, Warp Trader 6 selects an enemy unit that's visible to the Psyker until the start of your next phase. This unit cannot fire Overwatch at Blood Axe units from your army and cannot be chosen to fight with uh, until all eligible Blood Axe units have been chosen to do so. That is phenomenal. That is a really, really good psychic power. Um, switching off Overwatch in the unit is fantastic. And the fact that it also means that you can strike first. So it's got that dual utility for when you're shooty, uh, when you're playing against a shooty tower list or whatever to when you're playing against a, I don't know, like a, a Tyranid list or something that's going to try and get you in combat. Um, that is really, really, really good. 
just you got to take blood axes axes for it and are you going to do it well look it's it's limited to a blood axe uh, unit uh or it's limited to affecting a blood axe unit in that they can't be overwatched and they get to fight first and i believe it would must mean that it would have to be cast by a blood axe uh, weird boy but that doesn't mean to say that the rest of that detachment has to be blood axes so if you find yourself looking for a mixed detachment because you want a weird boy and a unit of I don't know, uh, storm boys who are going to fly across the board turn one um, maybe you opt for this and then maybe the rest of that uh, un that unit is filled out with some other units that's going to take some advantage of a particular strategy or something mixed attachments are really really uh, a good way of getting a lot of toolbox utility into an army um, and not obviously you lose the the clan trait um, but you get the stratagems you get the psychic powers so maybe you find yourself combining two or three things here to make to make a powerful list so uh, it it could find a place uh, i can see that uh, and then lastly, uh, and I can't read it here, so apologies for going out of the screen. Uh, this is the free boosters one. Uh, and this is, uh, if Manifesto selects an enemy unit within 8 inches of the psychic, of the psyker until the start of your next psychic phase, the move characteristics of all models in this unit, uh, sorry, half the move characteristics and subtract one from advanced and charge rolls. Yeah, it's good. Um, it's halving move characteristic, uh, subtracting one for advanced and charge rolls is pretty big. Um, obviously they have to be on the board and then you have to cast it on them uh, so it's not quite as good as if you could just do it reactively when something came out of deep strike for example so yeah it just across the board this book just feels like one of those books that like had it had this come out I don't know, a year ago when we you know first got the codex drops everyone would look at this and go oh it's amazing but look at this look at that look at this but i don't know if we're just jaded by stuff like space marines these days and, and you know i'm, I'm not going to just harp on about that you know, some amazing stuff in the in the chaos books and this amazing stuff in some of the other codexes that come out uh tau codex for example uh that i just don't see this just feels very outdated uh, a lot of this stuff just feels very outdated it's, there's there's better versions of everything i think we're getting to the point of eighth edition now where the core rule set's been so firmly established the the books have come out and tried to push the the envelope and some of it succeeded and some have failed and we found a lot and a lot and a lot of repeat of ideas you know um that's why harking back to the beginning of the video i was so excited to see something like gaskell flacker's rule for uh, maximum wounds being able to take in a certain phase because that's fresh that's new that's not being played out but in the in the edition in the era of the edition that we're in now we've seen so many reduced charge rolls by two you know uh, can't deep strike within 12 therefore can't even declare a charge that something like i'll oh, just minus one from their advance and charge it, it just feels a little bit weaker in comparison it's still good it, don't get me wrong it's still got power as i said if it came back uh, out a year ago would be super excited about but i just look at it now in terms of some of the really strong power and i just it doesn't really measure up and I think that's kind of my conclusion on the book really there's some interesting stuff there's some stuff that you're going to play around with um but i just don't think there's any there's nothing game breaking there i don't think there's anything that's going to get nerfed into the ground because it's it's overplayed which is a good thing don't get me wrong um, but i also don't think there's enough there to kind of bring it up it feels a bit a bit um, reserved uh, I don't blame James uh, James Workshop. I don't blame him specifically, um, but I don't blame Games Workshop for holding back a little bit, particularly with the Orcs, because it's uh, it's a it's an army that is very powerful. It, it was certainly for a long time considered to be. Perhaps there's elements of it that are too powerful, but uh, that was only on the first read, and I think as it got played out, people struggled with it a little bit, and I think they're a bit worried if they gave them too much, that they could just overwhelm it. So, uh, a kudos to them, um, but you know, it, it does mean it falls a little bit short of the mark for people that were going to get super excited for mass or competitive play now. So, uh, I felt the same about the, game, uh, the Gene Scaler cult book when it first came out, and I haven't really been seeing anything that's coming out of that that's exciting me. The same with the Tyranid book as well. There's a, one or two things that have come out there that are a little bit good. I'm hoping people can find that with this book. Um, but for now, that's my, my take on it. Um, I don't think you want me to go through every single orc name generator. <laughs> <laughs> because i think we could probably guess most of them uh, so yeah thank you very much guys uh that's my hot take um as much as i don't have a huge knowledge on orcs hopefully i've given you something to take away and uh, just watch this space because i believe the next book is engine war i 100 percent can give you some interesting combos on that because uh, i've got a lot of stuff ticking around in my mind when it comes to the the knights the chaos knights and the uh, and the demons so i am going to really tear into that book when we get it so that's the end of next month look forward to that and then obviously we've got some interesting stuff on the horizon off the back of that 
stay safe guys I uh, hope you have a having a good time out there um, and just lastly I took a few minutes here just to say or just a few seconds to say if you really want to play a game of uh, Warhammer at the moment, and I know a lot of people are sort of struggling with that given the current situation, uh, please check out Tabletop Simulator. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, I've used it a lot. Me and Andy play quite regularly on it because uh, we live so far away. I play with my friends in America on it. It's Warhammer. Um, it takes a little bit of learning to get used to. I'll probably look at trying to do a video on it. But if you guys are ha hankering for a game, that's a very safe way of doing that in the current climate. And it, it does work well once you kind of get used to it. Um, uh, so a little PSA there out for people looking for that. Uh, I know there's a big um, movement at the moment for people trying to get online and, and uh, Discord servers and things like that and tournament series and stuff that are starting to run on it. So just for a short term, uh, you know, just, just check it out. But please, when, when things blow over and we get back to normal life, go back and support the hobby. We wouldn't be here without Games Workshop and the models are fantastic. And I know having played a lot of tabletop simulator that I kind of get bored of it. And I just want to go out and paint my models and get out with a tangible aspect of the hobby, which is why we all play. Uh, so there's light in the short term, uh, but in the long term, let's make sure we keep Games Workshop going and they can bring out fantastic new rules. Um, maybe a little bit more than what they brought out here, but hey, sometimes they hit, sometimes they miss. And uh, so thanks very much, guys. Take care.